welcome or welcome back to my channel i am so very happy to have you here today so today we're going to be filling a spread in my sketchbook i've decided to paint a few birds that are native to the area that i live so i live in upstate new york near the adirondack mountains and so we have a lot of different types of birds but these ones specifically are some of my favorites and ones that i see on pretty much a daily or weekly basis I'm using acrylic paint in my sketchbook. The sketchbook that I'm using is the same as my last video. It's the Etcher, I believe it's called the Everyday Sketchbook. I happen to have the hot press, so it has nice and smooth paper, which is my favorite. I love hot press paper so much, but I think I'm gonna be trying cold press next. We'll see. And I'm just using my acrylic paints that I already have. Um, I primarily use the Utrecht brand, and I think they have worked fabulously in this sketchbook. The only thing that I wish that I had changed with this spread is my palette. So I'm using the Masterson's Stay Wet palette. It's the small one. I think it's like a 9 by 12 maybe. And it is a beautiful, wonderful palette. It is just game changing when you're working with acrylic paints. If you are having a hard time with your paints drying so quickly on your palette, especially depending on where you live, you might not even have the opportunity to use your paints. I highly recommend the Masterson's Stay Wet Palette. It is truly a lifesaver and a game changer. I used to hate acrylic painting and then once I got this palette and I gave it a shot with this Masterson's Stay Wet Palette, it really has elevated my paintings. And I am not sponsored or being paid to say nice things about it. It is truly my opinion. However, I did notice that the paint seemed really thin. I typically like to layer my paints, so it's not unusual for me to go in with a really thin layer first, but I feel like if I had gone in with some thicker layers, I definitely would have had a more successful res result or maybe even had to work a little bit less to get the results that I got. So. With the Masterson Stay Wet Palette, if your paints are in there for too long or maybe you're spraying them down too often, they have the opportunity to really break down and pretty much just melt right into the paper that's underneath them. Especially if you're mixing really lightly or like you're mixing a small amount of paint, I feel like it definitely has the opportunity to be absorbed into the paper or to get thinned down really easily, if that makes sense. <laughs> That is like the one and only negative with this Masterson Stay Wet palette and I feel like part of that is even my user error. This is a palette that I've been working on for a long time so I think that is also a part of it. So um, if you're not familiar with the Masterson's palette, it has two layers so it basically is like a plastic shallow box it has a really really thin sponge on the bottom and then it has like a porous paper on top where you put your paints and so I don't want to change out my paper very often because I feel like it's a waste of paint if I have a lot on the paper but like maybe my paper is all filled up with different swatches and different color mixes I will go ahead and just continue to use it and I'm sure that's not the way that I'm supposed to be doing it Oop. You could hear Lupin shaking in the background, I'm sorry. But anyways, Lupin is my German Shepherd <laughs> and his collar clacks together when he shakes. But anyways, I think that that is my issue. There you could get a shot of the palette there and see what I'm talking about. I don't want to waste my paint and if I'm just taking a break from the painting that I'm working on anyways, I don't want to 
ditch or throw out some of that, you know, some of those color mixes that I already have going on. So it's a me problem, 100%. <laughs> So this mallard duck, somehow the beginning portion of her painting got lost. I don't know if I was just a dum-dum and I forgot to hit record on the camera or maybe if somewhere when transferring it from my camera to the computer, I happened to lose it somehow. I, I don't know where the beginning part of her footage went. I do have a little bit of her sketch, but it was kind of boring and not the best angle for you guys to see anything, so I didn't even bother to include it. But I don't, I don't know what happened to it. Um, it is what it is, and of all the birds on here, if it was gonna happen to any of them, I'm okay that it happened to the duck. I mean, everybody knows what a mallard duck looks like. So, and it was just like the very beginning, like light washes of paint anyway, so I'm not too angry about it. Just to trail off on a different subject for a moment, I am a complete nerd and my favorite subject to paint are mushrooms. I just, I love painting mushrooms and I've been working on a series of paint, paintings. Um, so for the longest time, I've always wanted to have a really solid body of work and I've, I've never accomplished that. I think that was my issue when I graduated high school and I didn't know what I wanted to do and I was not encouraged to go to college and I, it's a long story but I did not go to college and I did not go and get any sort of art degree anything like that and I do kind of wish that I had some sort of schooling behind me I wish that I had gone to school for just a little bit longer I don't know just to fall back on it or just to make myself feel a little bit more confident Oh, Lupin. Okay, I think he's done now. <laughs> but anyways, I, I never went to school for any art or anything like that. And I kind of wish that I had some sort of like business or marketing or something behind me just so that I could feel more confident and feel like I knew what I was doing. Um, I do have a, a regular nine to five now and I'm satisfied with it. It has fantastic benefits, but I've always wanted to have a really solid body of work. I do have an art show coming up um, in 2025, so I've, I've got some time to figure that out, but I've never really known like what, what direction I wanted to go in with art. I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over the place, but I've never wanted to, I've never known exactly what I wanted to do with art. When I was in high school and when I did the majority of my training or learning with art, I really was focused on portraits and then I took a long break from art and then once I moved into the house that I'm in now I started to take it a little bit more seriously and I feel like I am like dusting my technique and my skills off and I feel like I'm starting over in a way and I feel like I'm just starting to build up my portfolio and decide on what I want to do. And the avenue that I have decided is to take an ant's perspective of mushrooms. And because I grew in the Adirondack Mountains, whoa, because I live in the Adirondack Mountains, I have a very short window for mushrooms. And because obviously I'm going to take my own reference photos. So it's kind of like a, a really fun, like, you know, I have to go out and search for them and mushrooms definitely <laughs> is kind of unique and i feel like not a lot of people would expect to see a portfolio of mushrooms it's working because i have a gallery show coming up in a while it's a while away but it's coming up and so I don't know, I'm kind of a little bit encouraged by that. I just feel like I'm like a baby artist and I'm like trying to emerge and improve at the same time. And all I really want is to draw and paint and have it sustain itself. And maybe one day I could afford to quit my job. That's like the ultimate dream. I don't know if I'll ever get there. And frankly, I just want to enjoy the process and not necessarily have that be like the number one main goal. 
feel like if I focus on that too much, I'm going to lose sight of really what's important to me, and that is drawing and painting. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I don't know if anybody else is having the same struggles, but creating a portfolio is really hard work. I mean, you have to get like 15 to 20 plus paintings and they all have to be cohesive in some way. And that is really hard, especially like me when I was focusing mostly on portraits and I was too scared to try anything else because I was afraid that it was going to test my skills and I was somehow going to be a, a lesser artist because I was starting over in a way. So I'm just excited to paint for the sake of painting and appreciate art for what it is. And it, it truly is just a hobby right now, but I, I am hoping that one day I can make it a full-time thing. So as you can see, my palette is quite messy. Um, there's a lot going on there and there's many, many layers of paint, but I feel like if it works, it works. And why change the paper? <laughs> I could probably scrape the paint off and change the paper, but I'm going to leave it for now. It is what it is. So back to the paintings. This is a Kingfisher. I think it's a belted kingfisher if i remember correctly i haven't seen too many of these guys um only when i go and hike or go for a walk near like a, a little pond that's near me i will see them then but i thought this guy was so cute when i saw him on pinterest with his little fish in his mouth all of these photos are referenced from pinterest i would love to use my own reference photos, but I simply am not that good with photography. Not good enough to get these type of references. <laughs> so Pinterest it was. And I'm okay with that. Sometimes I feel like I'm using Pinterest too much, especially with portraits. I feel like everybody on art YouTube is just drawing and painting the same portraits. And, you know, I mean, that's, I feel like that's just the way it's going to be. It's really, really hard to find decent reference photos so we all have one really good source and so we're all going to take advantage of that. I'm using pretty much the same technique for all of these little birds. I start out with really light layers and then I work my way up. That's typically my technique for every subject or every painting. With these acrylic paints though, I do wish that I had gone a little bit thicker in the beginning. I feel like it would have saved me a lot of time. I'm also using Princeton Select brushes, and I think that red one there is a Blick brush. I love Princeton Select brushes. They are fantastic. I just use them so often and they're so versatile. The bristles are wonderful and I've only had like two wear out on me and even then I'm still going to use them because they are fantastic for creating little textures. Just as a warning, you may hear some thunder in the background. It is getting very, very dark here and I may have to pause this for a moment to shut my windows because it's getting pretty dark. Within the last couple weeks or so we've gotten a couple tornadoes which is uncalled for up here in the Adirondacks it it truly never happens I think the last time it happened was like 70 years ago I think I heard so it's it's really uh, a rare thing um and they're like the tiniest tornadoes but because we never get them it does a lot of damage um there's like a spot on the road between where I live and the town below us that is so bad like there's like a, a 50 foot spot where all the trees are just gone and I know that that's nothing compared to the tornadoes that people deal with down south but for us it was just shocking and I remember when I first saw the rain and the wind I was shocked I've never seen anything like that before so I'm kind of worried that it's going to happen again because it's been really really hot and humid and we've had some we've had some nice days but lately it's it's just been unbearably hot and humid i think it's been in the 90s today with like high humidity it's been awful and i love summertime and i typically love the high heat and the humidity but sometimes it's just too much 
we just recently came back from a camping trip and one of the days that we were there was just so unbearably hot <laughs> and i it, like when you're outside like that and you really just get no relief it's just too much so i kind of wish that i had moved the great blue herring this guy that i'm working on now i wish that i had moved him over like swapped places with him and the hummingbird or the duck just because i feel like he is so grayish blue and so is the kingfisher that they kind of blend in or i feel like you kind of lose the herring um it doesn't pop out on the page like the other birds do and so i i do wish that i had changed that i also i really like how i kept his background really simple with just silhouette cattails and i'm i'm pretty happy with the way that that turned out anyways we're nearing the end you guys i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did like it please subscribe i would love to have you here and take you along on this journey where i'm trying to improve my artwork and trying to build up a portfolio and i hope that you enjoyed this video and i'll let you guys listen to some music and i'll stop talking <laughs> see you guys time <laughs>